What's up my friends, I'm Harv, I'm a videographer and on this channel I make videos about videography. In this video I'm checking out the Tascam Portacapture X8 portable multi-track recorder with 32-bit recording. This is quite a departure for Tascam from the kind of 80s looking, albeit good, products from yesteryear. Let's check it out. I now have a Patreon for this channel, the idea being that any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I review gear, and then I give it away to my backers. It's inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee, so if you find this video helpful and you like giveaways, do check it out, it's linked in the description box below. This version I bought with my own personal cash because I wanted to do a really good review that's completely unbiased, and I also wanted to upgrade from the DR40 from Tascam that I've been using for years. Jumping into the features of the X8, and it has eight channels. Don't be fooled into thinking it has eight inputs. It doesn't. You get four XLR inputs and two from the built-in XY mics, and the remaining two are used to make a stereo mix of your recordings. You get a three and a half inch full color LCD touchscreen, which is really nice to see. I've never had this on a Tascam product before. Like most handheld recorders of this type, as I mentioned, you get the built-in XY mics. You can either have them in this pattern, which is XY, or you can have them in AB, which is pointing this way and this way. Also, you get built-in EQ, low-cut filter, compressor, limiter, auto gain, noise gate, so it's like a mini mixing desk. Of course, the headline feature of the X8 is that it records up to 192kHz in 32-bit float mode. And what is 32-bit? Why is it a big deal? Well, given that this is mainly a videography channel, let me explain with videography kind of context. Let's first look at 16-bit audio, and I think we can compare this with something like 8-bit video. It's kind of fine, as long as you don't mess things up too much and don't need to edit it too much, it's okay. And then next you have 24-bit audio, which I would liken to something like 10-bit video. You know, it's a noticeable step up in quality, still won't, you know, it's not as flexible as, we're just about to find out, 32-bit, but good. 32-bit audio, however, is a little more like raw video. You get so much more latitude. All of a sudden, you don't really need to worry about clipping audio so much because you can recover those peaks. I suppose it's similar in a way to shooting raw video and having clipped highlights. You're really gonna be able to recover a good deal of that, of that information. In fact, Tascam have a very good diagram which demonstrates this really well, which I'll show you on screen right now. The same goes for if you record something too quietly and need to add more volume in your editor. With lower bit depths, doing this is going to start to sound gritty, not so clean, and could introduce more noise. With 32-bit, no worries. Next, on to user experience and user interface, and having owned the X8 for a little while now, the really big thing for me is the touchscreen. It's just glorious. It's super contrasty, really bright, really uh, snappy and responsive. And this is just such a breath of fresh air when you compare it to products from back along. You know, like I, I've come from using the Tascam DR40, which has this horrible 80s looking LCD screen. And this is just a huge leap. I found it just a breeze to get started recording without even looking at the manual at all. There are, of course, lots of presets to get you started. There's manual, of course, voice, podcast, music, field recording and ASMR. Personally, I'm a manual guy. I like to set things up myself and it's really not difficult to do that. I love the addition of a tuner and a metronome. I'm a guitarist and for a long time now I've been using app versions on my phone of a tuner and a metronome and they're just okay and they certainly don't compare to hardware versions like you get in the X8. One thing I found kind of odd is this. Let's say you're planning on recording just a basic recording of a live gig. You only need the XY mics, so on the inputs page you disable inputs 3, 4, 5 and 6. You then switch the unit off to save battery until the show starts. Showtime and you switch the X8 back on, hit record, only to find it's recording all six inputs once again. I get why it does this, it's kind of a fail safe, but it is annoying because it captures so much more data. I did some testing of the file sizes and they go from quite reasonable to really quite large depending on your settings. 
I set the sample rate to 48 kilohertz. That's just my preference. I just like 48 kilohertz. And here you can see the different kind of file sizes you're gonna get depending on just your settings. 16 bit, we're getting 22 megabytes per minute. This is per channel, of course. 24 bit, we're getting 33 megabytes per minute. And then 32 bit float, we're getting 44 megabytes per minute. Now, just to stress again, this is per channel or per input. So depending on how you're recording this, these figures could be six times higher. Also, the sample rate is gonna make a big difference to your file sizes. Maxed out at 32 bit, 192 kilohertz, the X8 is gonna be quaffing 177 megabytes per minute. Use all six inputs, maxed out, it's gonna be guzzling over a gigabyte per minute. That's significant. So how does the X8 sound? Does it have a sound? Well, this is a little hard for me to answer because after a very long journey of learning about owning and using a lot of different kind of mic preamps and analog to digital converters and that kind of thing, I have come to the conclusion, this is not going to be popular, but I've come to the conclusion that they are mostly snake oil. I'm sure my video based viewers are going, what? Well, preamps, all they're doing really, it's just the circuit that amplify the signal of a microphone and these kind of separate modules that you can get, you know, this kind of studio preamps are, they can be stupidly expensive and the marketing around them is ridiculous. They, they you know, promise transformative tone and, and saturation and vintage warmth and all of that kind of stuff. In my experience, they make only a tiny difference and compared to say buying a different microphone or better microphone or a, a better instrument or upgrading room acoustics, these things make a world of difference compared to mic preamps and analog digital converters. I apologize to any viewers who have already spent thousands on mic preamps. I naturally expect you to be very defensive about your spending. And if you can hear a difference and you think it makes a difference to what you do, then good for you. I just find the difference in sound quality to price ratio to be really wonky. And that's why I don't want to wax lyrical about the sound of the X8. It's clean in all modes and obviously it's best in 32 bit. It records audio with good dynamics. That's it. On to build quality and it has a plastic construction which feels fairly sturdy, like seven out of 10 sturdy. It's good, but not a tank. I will say the buttons feel really good. Although we do have this rotating large red dial, which I, I honestly don't know what it's for. I have never used it. I thought when I first got it, I'd be using it all the time, but yeah, I've, I've never used it. And I suppose that speaks to just the quality and intuitiveness of the user interface and you know the, the kind of snappy um, feel of the touchscreen. So reading user reviews before I picked up the X8, I had a few concerns about the rigidity and sort of sturdiness of these XY microphones because they are reportedly were quite plasticky and I can confirm they are quite plasticky. And usually devices like this have measures in place to kind of protect them and this doesn't. So I'm worried if I drop it, that's it. In the past, I've been pleasantly surprised by the quality of the XY mics that you have built in. So I was really excited to try these, and so I did. And how do they sound? Well, really freaking good. Really good. Check it out.
So I've just mounted the X8 on top of my camera as my on-camera mic, which admittedly is kind of overkill, I understand. You know, having 32-bit recording and stereo mics, but you could do it. I've just got it mounted using a ball head and just wanted to see what it sounded like. So does it sound good? So getting the X8 made me wonder how it compares to other similar products. The two that spring to mind are the Zoom H8 and the highly regarded sound devices Mix Pre 6 Mark II. <gasps> yes, let me explain. The H8 is cheaper than the X8 and has a little more flexibility when it comes to inputs, but doesn't have 32-bit recording. So you just have to consider what's more important to you. However, the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 Mark II is more than double the price of the X8, and on paper, things look eerily similar. Both give you high quality portable 32-bit multi-track recording, both have timecode, XLR inputs with clean preamps, both can act as a USB audio interface. I'm not saying they're equal products by any means, but they are more equal than the big disparity in price would suggest. Anyway, now let's go through the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros, and you get batteries included? Not a big deal, I know, but... I was kind of glad to see them, it meant I could just chuck them in and get going. The display is gorgeous, large, bright, contrasty, vibrant, it's just a joy to use. It's also a touchscreen and it's lovely to use again, fast and really responsive. I have no complaints whatsoever by the user experience, it's just snappy, intuitive and just kind of got out of the way of the job of recording good audio. It's got lots of inputs, I mean that's kind of what this is for. 32-bit recording, you gotta love that. The built-in XY microphones sound really surprisingly great. I'm putting the price in the pros because I think it's a very fair price for what is a very high quality and feature packed product. Onto the cons and mini SD cards. Come on guys, this isn't a drone. I would have preferred standard size. Also, there's no internal storage. I just think this is a little bit of a missed opportunity. It just would have been so convenient. As much as I love the sound of the XY built-in mics, they are quite plasticky. There's nothing to protect them from impact. And if you want to swivel them to change their direction, it's a little bit of a fiddly process. You actually have to unscrew them. Unlike older products like my old Tascam DR40, so they're just a little bit flimsy and not as convenient. The 32-bit file sizes, whilst 32-bit recording sounds great, the file sizes are significantly more than 24-bit and you need to be prepared for that. Finally, to my opinion, and I've found using the X8 kind of mind-blowing, it's a giant leap when it comes to, you know, dragging the technology, look, feel and experience into this decade. And it's kind of, a, I, don't, I don't say it, a, it's a bit of a masterpiece. And honestly, I think Tascam needed this. When you look at the rest of the product line, you, I can see quite a few products there that really could do with a facelift. And this X8 really just to me looks like a shining beacon of the style of what's to come. The cons that I mentioned are so minor and certainly shouldn't put you off snapping one of these up. I would say at the moment this is possibly, it's one of the very best recorders on the market around this kind of price. And I would honestly say this is a really great alternative if you can't quite stretch to get the sound devices Mix Pre 6 Mark II, get this. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. My questions of the day are this. How much of a big deal is 32-bit recording to you? How does it impact your workflow? And pound for pound, considering the pricing, what's better, the X8 or the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 Mark II? definitely let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about audio and video on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video.